G'day everyone, thanks for tuning in and we're going to preview the Melbourne Cup for tomorrow. So uh, to do that, we'll have Trevor Lawson. How are you going, Trev? Good, Dave. Yeah. Good to hear. Um, it's a, another interesting race and you know, obviously there's a bit of a challenge with all the international runners over the last few years. So we'll get into the form in just a second, runner by runner. But uh, before we do, do you want to have a chat about the speed map? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, um, it's a bit speculative the map. I mean, just the race, um, you know, it's great to become international and all that, but it's, um, it just makes it harder to do the form. And uh, there's a lot of horses we haven't seen. Um, we have to rely on, you know, sort of time form ratings or other ratings, which are, uh, you know, third party ratings to mine. Um, but um, we'll have a, we've had a go and we'll see how we go. The map. Um, like usual, um, it's um, a bit speculative. You know, they start at, uh, I think it's about uh, the 800 metre mark in the straight. So there's a good 1,000 metres or 900 metres till they get to the first corner. So a lot of horses are drawn wide, can sort of roll forward. Uh, I thought the leader was uh, Runway. Uh, so Gay Waterhouse Source, it led at Geelong Cup. So it will lead from sort of a middle barrier. Uh, Venga Mast, the Japanese Source, Chestnut Coat and Best Solution from a better draw, they'll all sit close. And out wide, uh, cross counter, I'm not sure. Um, it's sort of settled back in a couple of runs and it's settled close up in it couple other runs but they were small fields but I just thought from the barrier McAvoy he would probably go forward Rostropovich and Ace High will they'll definitely go forward which should allow Yucatan he'll just come across with them so these horses will all sort of just come across and and then Yucatan will just attempt to get into sort the of one off the fence and you know they basically then should settle you know sort of forward of midfield um, young star sort of got midfield. He may sort of kick up a bit. Uh, international month, I'm not sure of. I've sort of got him sort of midfield, just forward of midfield. Uh, Magic Circle, his last two runs, he's sort of sat back off the pace. Uh, Prince of Aaron, I thought, would go back. Um, and Anavilius sort of likes to take a sit as well. So Eaton, Cliffs of Moab, they'll sort of settle off midfield, I thought. But um, and as I say, it can sort of alter a little bit because um, those horses with wide barriers, they sort of sometimes they like to do a bit of work early in a straight line and then try and get in. Okay. Um, we'll have another preview up on the site from Luke Murrell, who has a pretty good understanding of uh, the international runners, or very good understanding. He's expecting a pretty hot pace. How do you see that playing out? Um, possibly. It just, I mean, I suppose it just depends how quickly these if these horses here roll forward how quickly they get across and and how quickly they all find their position so once they all i mean ideally they'll all want to be getting an easiest run as they can so they'll be either want to be on the fence or one off the fence so i suppose the quicker the majority of the horses find their position the quicker the pace will sort of you know half sort of go out of the race um but if you know if, if runway has to work to cross and these horses in the middle here, they push forward and then these horses push forward, yeah, then it could be genuinely run, and genuinely run. But I mean, it's just, to me, it's just a bit of guesswork um, as to, you know, how they want it to, you know, I suppose Yucatan will want to make it a staying test like he did last start. Um, so, and best solution, best solution ran well last start as well when it was sort of when the pace went on at the 800. But yeah, you know, the Caulfield Cup they sort of went relatively slowly during the middle stages. So yeah, I'm sort of open to either you know could be evenly run, could be slowly run, or they could go quick. It's just not right. definitive. Yeah, a bit of unknown there. Um, all right, we'll take us through runner by runner. I know you like to start at the bottom. Um, massive field, though, so the ones that you don't give much chance to, you can um, keep it pretty brief. Yeah, we'll skip through the ones. Um, so the first horse is uh, Rostopovich. Uh, he came here with a time form rating of 
117, which he'd done twice. Uh, on my scale, that's about 63 and a half. Um, I'd put him in at 63 and a half in the Cox Plate. Um, the market had him doing about 65 and a half. The way I do that, it's off of Betfair SP, it's a bit hard to accurately do with, because Winx was favourite and Winx was sort of dollar 22 on Betfair, so it's hard to get a 100% accurate guide. Um, he did 59. Um, he did a lot of work in the race and he was beaten one length by Avilius. Um, Avilius got beat 7.8 and he got beat 8.8. Um, and I was happy to forgive Avilius's race so run. So I've actually rated him one length off Avilius's figure uh, of what he does in the race. So I'll put him in at, and that just happens to be his time form rating is 63 and a half. Uh, cross counter is uh, overseas horse. Um, he. Won two races at Ascot, then he ran at Goodwood, and then he ran second at York. Um, he sort of progressed his ratings each run. The plus means that you know, they thought the horse had more to give. He did 123, but that was in a field of four, um, and none of the other horses have come to Australia. He then ran second at York. Uh, returning 119. So I put him in at the 119. And so that equates to 64 and a half. Uh, young star. Uh, <clears throat> ran one four in a row uh, early in uh, New South Wales and Queensland. The staying trips as a three year old filly. Uh, it's had a good preparation, uh, ran terrific flashing home at uh, Flemington in the Turnbull behind uh, Winks, running the second quickest sectionals of the day behind Winks. And the Caulfield Cup uh, got shuffled right back out of the race and flashed home and actually ran the quickest last 200 of the day. Um, so I just put him in or her in at uh, her Turnbull figure, 64. Uh, one, one, run, run away, excuse me, uh, won the Geelong Cup. Um, he returned 60 and a half. Uh, that was his best ever figure on my stuff. Um, and that to, to my thing you know, gets him 150 to one, so it doesn't get him in the race at all. Uh, Zakata. Sir Charles Road, Nikita, I don't think any of them have got any chances at all. Uh, Prince of Aaron, uh, he was a good run behind Yucatan in uh, the Herbert Power, and then he won the Lexus, or if it's called something else now, I don't know. It uh, used to be the old Del Getty, but uh, on uh, Derby Day, uh, returned the same figure of 64. So I've put him in at 64. Uh, Ventura Storm won the Mooney Valley Cup, returning 62 and a half. He'd done 62 and a half in the Turnbull. Uh, he has gone a bit better in the past, but he's had, he ran the Cup last year and got beat 30 lengths and he ran in the Sydney Cup over uh, the same trip and got beat eight lengths. So I just sort of left him at the 62 and a half. Venga Mask and Red Cardinal um, thought they were roadblocks. Uh, Finch or Finchy, his overseas horse, he ran in the Geelong Cup. Um, he settled just off the pace. He was very one paced in the straight. He was uh, behind um, Gay's two horses who uh, settled first and third and they ran one, two. Um, he worked home one place, <coughs> one paced. Um, I rated him 63 and a half for that run. The 
the market thought he'd do 64. He did 61 and a half. He came here with a time form rating of 120, but it was in a small field. So uh, I've put him in, I improved him a length off the Geelong run and put him in at 63. Uh, Ouvre, didn't think enemy had a chance. A bit old, it's eight years old now. Uh, U10, the uh, favourite, it's an interesting one. Um, he didn't really have any time form ratings. Uh, his best time form rating was 114. Um, at Caulfield, the market sort of didn't really, you know, the market thought he'd only do 62 and a half. Um, this is where it becomes very subjective. Uh, he won by 1.3 lengths. Um, to my eye, at the 100 metre mark, I thought that's when he sort of grabbed hold of him completely and throttled him right down. And to my eye, I thought he was four lengths in front at that point. So I gave him the equivalent of the 2.7 to make it up to four lengths, which was four kilos, which gave him a rating of 68. Uh, he sat back and wide, he circled, took off of the 1200, and then he dashed away and it was easy to ride down. It was a super win. Um, you couldn't possibly ride him like that in the Melbourne Cup and win again. But, you know, he doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to. But I assume they'll roll forward from the barrier and start to put it out. He was trying to get in the running line. And I think he's the horse to beat if he can return that figure again. Uh, Avilius. <coughs> uh, he won his first four starts in Australia. Uh, progressing his race, uh, ratings nicely, sort of won around week over 2,000. Uh, then he won at Flemington, the Bart Cummings, to qualify for this. And then he just had a nice bowl around it and the Cox Plate, well beaten by Winks. But that was sort of expected. I've uh, just put him in at the figure that he returned in the Bart Cummings. Uh, Marmello, uh, he raced here last year. Uh, he ran uh, sixth in the cup, returning 65 and a half, and then he ran in, uh, sorry, Caulfield Cup, and then he ran in the Melbourne Cup, and um, he was sort of, he took off and went forward and sort of did too much work um, and knocked right up. Um, he came here last year with sort of a rating of 119. He returns here with a rating of about 120 which on my scale is 65. He did 65 in the Caulfield Cup last year. I mean, this is the only race that you do that I would use ratings from, you know, 12 months ago or less. Uh, I've put him in at the 65 and a half and just to see what it looks like. Uh, ace high. Uh, on my figures, um, he won the Derby last year, VRC Derby, and then he ran second in the Ramwick Derby, the AJC Derby. Uh, he produced his best figure on my stuff at Caulfield, uh, at Ramwick two starts ago. He was well beaten at Caulfield the other day. Um, I didn't think he could redo that figure again. Uh, and I was happy to sort of rate him a bit less, I rate him 63 and a half. Uh, who shot the barman? I didn't like. Uh, Soundcheck did nothing first up. He came here with a rating of 119. Uh, the market thought he'd do 63 and a half first up in the Geelong, uh, in the Caulfield Cup. He didn't do anywhere near that. He did sort of 50 getting beaten 10 and a half lengths. Um, I've rated him, I've put him in at 62 just to see what it looks like uh, and I can't price him. Uh, Muntaha. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, he comes with a rating of 121. Uh, he won the Ebor, uh, I think it is, by 3.3 um, .3 lengths. Um, the only horse in this race that, or racing uh, that ran in that race was uh, Nikita, who was beaten seven lengths by it. Um, he returned 121, which is about 65 and a half. So I put it in at 65 and a half. Uh, chestnut coat, uh, we backed it in the Caulfield Cup. Um, we sort of got shuffled back at a vital stage after the pace slowed and then they took off. Uh, I thought he'd go better than what the market thought. Um, he was well beaten, but um, the market thought he'd do 64. And I sort of put him in at that figure just to see what it looks like. It is a dry track. It was a Japanese horse. Sometimes they don't handle all their tracks. <laughs> Uh, the other interesting runner is Magic Circle, um, owned by the flamboyant man who wants to wear his G-string. Um, he looks to be a different horse. Uh, last year he was sort of 1-5 early, 1-7 with a thing. And then he returned in May, returned one eighteen, and then one at Sandown. In a way for age race returning 122. Um, at Sandown, sorry, Chester, Chester he beat uh, the Prince of Aaron by eight and a half, 8.8 lengths. Um, he received weight off a Prince of Aaron and of two and a half kilos. And here he's got to give Prince of Aaron three kilos. So Prince Aaron makes it five and a half kilos better, but did get beat nearly almost nine lengths. Um, so the horse hasn't raced since uh, May, um, but obviously this has just been a target race. So it's one of the two races. Um, they were over 3,700 and 3,265. Uh, sometimes in the past, the horses that have run over the long trips in Europe have uh, struggled here. They've been to one pace, but this horse, watching his videos, he um, seems to have um, a big turn of foot and uh, he's won by big margins. He's progressed, he's rating it basically each start last time. Uh, the 122 equates to 66. Um, I thought in both times he had sort of more to give. So a bit speculative, but I put him in at 67 and a half. So I improved him another length off what he'd actually done. I think this is a target race. Uh, Cliffs of Mo, Mo Hare. Um, he flashed home in the Caulfield Stakes behind Ben Batal. Running, uh, you can see he ran the fifth, sixth, and fifth quickest sectionals home of the day. Uh, <clears throat> Caulfield Cup wasn't really so, it was a funny run race. They sort of went slow and then they took off and went for home at the 800. He got left flat footed. Um, he got beat two lengths, just under two lengths by a solution. Um, he rated a bit less than what the market thought he would do. Uh, I've put him in at uh, 60, so he's done 64 and a half, 63 and a half, and the market thought he'd do 68 the other day, and I put him at 67. So I've put him in here at 66. So I've, I've stepped him one off his first up run and sort of half the given the other day, thinking this was the target race. So I've put him in at 66, and the best solution. Um, was a terrific win in the Caulfield Cup. Um, he was knocked over at the start. He just circumnavigated till he got in, sort of round the down the side at sort of the 1600. Um, when Lloyd Williams horse took off at the 800, he went with it and then just kept fighting on all the way to the line. Um, thought it was a terrific win. Uh, he hasn't been sort of further than you know, 2,400 before, but uh, in the past, a lot of those horses 
of Ramwell, who um, he generally won the Cup, won with Flemington, they won the Cup, and I don't think he'd won sort of past 2000, I think, or 2400 when he came here. Uh, he did 67, <clears throat> I thought he'd do 66 and a half, the market thought he'd do 67, 66 and a half, so he sort of did around the market, but he did a bit of work and he was terrific, and I would assume this is a Taylor race, so I thought he could possibly improve off that, and I put him in at 68. So the market is like this, without sort of taking out the rubbish. Uh, best solutions, sort of $12 shot, Magic Circles, $10. Monster, sort of 19 Marmello, Avilius, 19 Yucatan, not uh, 550 uh, Prince of Aaron, 19 Young Star, around $10. Cross Counter, around $8. And Rostovovic, around $12. We go to the market. Uh, 76,000 in the wind pool. Uh, you can six dollars favourite, um, but fixed odds and Betfair. You know, best solutions around what price it is. Um, Magic of Circles slightly shorter. Moon for Hearts much shorter than uh, than I have it. Uh, Mamela is about the same price. Avilius's is thing. You can Six forty, a little bit of six five fifty is around the market. Um, Prince of Aaron's slightly shorter than my price. Uh, Young Star looks good overs. Uh, it's it's eighteen dollars. Teddy looks good overs. Cross counters slight overs. And the bottom one, it looks big overs. Uh, it's twenty six dollars twenty nine on bet there and. 31, 36, 70 best tidies books. It looks good sort of value at the moment. Um, <coughs> excuse me, with a lot of the horses, it's, sometimes it's hard to get some sort of value because the market's been out for so long that it just gets chiseled away, chiseled away, chiseled away. But, you know, I think uh, Young Star represents some good value, Roster Povich, some good value, and um, the favourites around what price it is. All right, Trev, pretty comprehensive preview there, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be a big betting race for you. Uh, well, not really. I mean, cause, only because, as I said before, because you're sort of getting some you know, some ratings in that third party from uh, places. But, um, I mean, it's the cup, so you normally <laughs> finish up having a bet. Um, so I sort of just um, see how it works out. But, um, yeah, Mr. in Yucatan and um, a couple of those down the bottom and, <clears throat> you know, if we could maybe save on Magic Circle or something. I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of dead wood in the races. Um, a lot of horses that um, I'm not sure how they're actually qualified, but, um, uh, but as usual, it'll be a great race and um, hopefully we find the winner. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm sure there'll be some other good betting opportunities tomorrow and throughout the rest of the Flemington Carnival. So. Uh, check yeah, out championbets.com.au yeah. yeah. for, for people that are interested. And um, for Trev, you know, he'll have his full rating set and speed map, uh, comments on the main chances and also the live page because it'll be interested, interesting to see how the track plays tomorrow as well. Um, yes, um, I'll get a report at lunch from today. Um, they've suggested, um, yeah, you know, up to 15 mil of rain uh, today and tomorrow, but... Um, Excuse me, it's, um, you know, as we do this sort of mon uh, Monday morning, um, we I think they had two mil of rain overnight and it looks you know, roughly like most of it's sort of gone in the Melbourne area. Most of it's up higher or over in the east and, or down lower in the Bass Strait. So um, it, they're suggesting thunderstorms, which means it's sort of hit and miss. So it'll be sort of... Um, you know, just a bit of wait and see what happens. Um, but he's moved the rail out two metres from the other day. So I would suggest that it would be fairly um, fresh ground. Um, so it will just depend. Um, the worst thing that can happen is that it rains during the meeting and then they can really open up the ground. But if it rains before, then the track, the track drain it at about 100 litres of water per hour. So um, that's why they get so firm, because they uh, drain so well. Right. Bit of a catch-22. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just sort of wait and see with the weather. But you know, generally when they, um, uh, well, as you know here, like, we don't get much rain. So generally whatever they say it is, we get about a quarter of it. Fair enough. All right, Trev, thanks for that. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Should be a, a great race and a great day's racing. Um, give us a, a call, get in touch if you've got any questions at all. Otherwise, best of luck. Great. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.